Greetings, sacred rainbow nations of the new earth tribes, rising up as one nation under the great spirit, the great sky, the highest heavens, and the holiest temples of the golden ones, as we are transmuting, transforming, transitioning into the great golden age. We had another day of intense waves of energy coming in. There was at a point today, multiple times, where I was in between worlds. And about midday, I was in between worlds, jumping timelines, and dreaming while awake. Welcome to the new earth. All these experiences we're having with these time anomalies, these time jumps, we are going non-linear and beyond that quantum. So even looking back just through the day, it doesn't seem like time aligns in a linear fashion. I know most of you know what I'm talking about. And that's just something that our mind is getting used to, where we're not being controlled by time or being a prisoner of linear time. We're fluctuating between linear and nonlinear, preparing for the freedom from both, which is quantum. As we prepare for this quantum leap of consciousness, from Homo sapien to Homo luminous, beings of light, this is coming through for me with our 12D Venusian lineages. Looking at the Schumann charts, we had about 52 hours of total blackout, which was more than a little over two days. And then when it came back online today, earlier today, we had a 23 hertz amplitude. I'll, I'll make myself clearer. Some people get freaked out when I say it's a hertz bass resonance. We know the difference between the bass resonance and the amplitudes and overtones, but I don't want to explain every time you know, to people. Obviously, they might be new to the channel. We know the bass resonance and the amplitudes, but it's all irrelevant. It's just showing us that these higher dimensional frequencies are coming into these timelines to assist with this great ascension. And we know that everything in the universe is sound and light, its frequency, its resonance. And these are some of the things when we say the codes, which I'll explain at the end of today's transmission, because I saw people had questions about that too. I don't have time to any more to respond to comments because time is of the essence. And with all these time accelerations, I'm starting these transmissions later in the evening after everything I have to accomplish in the day. Plus, my circadian rhythms have totally shifted to Pacific time, the time of the condor, preparing me for my great journey, which I'm seeing hopefully will begin within the next seven days. 1137 coming in today, 711, 117, 77, 71, 17. Many codes coming in through these symbols and frequencies. Today we had over 131 M1.5 or greater earthquakes. And again, most of these were around the ring of fire with the Lemurian energy. Again, we had a couple in the sacred portal. In Chile, Atacama with a 4.0 earlier today. And then in the sacred portal of Colombia, 4.4. Indonesia, 4.8. And then again today, right at the tip of the trunk of the little elephant of Antarctica, little Ganesh, bringing his abundance and good fortune we had in the South Shetland Islands of 4.6. Okinawa, Japan, 4.4, then several earthquakes in Russia, 4.8, 4.7, then a 4.6. Venezuela had a 4.7 30 minutes ago, and Central America, El Salvador, a 4.1. The most powerful one today, a 5.6 in Panama, also on the Ring of Fire. And every day with these crown activations, Anchor Point, Alaska, 3.3, 1330 UTC. So we had the 333 encoded in there. And most of us are feeling these crown activations. 
it was also posted today of this very special type of aurora that appeared over Finland called a corona. It's a form of the northern lights that rains down directly overhead. And obviously corona with the crowning and these crown activations and the queen manifesting her sacred golden crown of the black gold condor. We'll start today's first transmission from Divine Sister of the Light, Anrita Melchizedek. Beloved hearts, in the sacred month of September, as we align ever deeper to the cosmic heart of Mother Father God and the New Earth Templates, we are embraced within the beautiful golden blue flame of Christ consciousness and will and power, coming ever deeper into empowerment and looking through our master eyes at all of life around us as we align our will to the will of God. On the lower timelines, this offers an opportunity to clear misuse and abuse of power, release addictions, purify, create healthy boundaries with clear communication, and come deeper into strength and courage in the expression of our thoughts, feelings, and actions. From within the New Earth templates, we deepen into the inner plane, ashrams, and soul consciousness, recognizing ourselves as initiates of light, as priests and priestesses to the order of Melchizedek, as we step into the next level of our service work and souls blossoming collectively walk the path of divine love. So as you take a deep breath into the body now, breathing in love and breathing out love, and calling upon your master guides, guardian angel, and all the illumined beings of light from on high, you personally acknowledge you are invited to travel in soul consciousness into the ashram of the cosmic Christ within Shambhala, to bring in this now the knowing of the illumination of yourself as a Melchizedek initiate of light. You now state, I am now lifted in soul consciousness into the ashram of the cosmic Christ within Shambhala, traveling through the first ray ashram of will and power and into the sacred golden temple of cosmic Christ consciousness, welcomed and greeted as an initiate of light and surrounded by the council of twelve, I am taken into a central pyramidal-shaped temple of light. Lord Melchizedek appears before me now, welcoming me to this ashram of Cosmic Christ Consciousness. Lord Melchizedek now drapes this golden, beautiful, purple robe of light, this cloak of light around my body and energy field. And as he does, he takes his rod of light and taps it first on my left shoulder, then my right shoulder, then my crown chakra. As this occurs, the three-dimensional star of Melchizedek now appears in a beautiful golden color embossed upon the left breast of my initiatory cloak of light. Lord Melchizedek now says, The initiatory cloak of light will take you deeper into a knowing of yourselves as the priests and priestesses in service to Mother Earth and all her life, and in service to in many dimensions of light, as the cloak of remembrance that will allow you to understand your challenges as initiates of light. We further invite you to experience the activation of the twelve initiations of light, taking you deeper into the knowing of the keys of self-mastery and yourselves as Melchizedek ambassadors of light. Go now deep into the remembrance of the roles you have played, the roles you have experienced, the roles you are still choosing through the stories and the myths as you create these pathways of divine love for yourself and others. And know that each challenge is but a deeper level of initiation, taking you deeper into the love of creation, deeper into the strength, the wisdom, the power within yourselves as the way showers, the world teachers, and the initiates of light in service to the lower worlds. Lord Melchizedek now offers to me a signet ring, the remembrance of my promise of service and love to Mother Earth in all her life, and the knowing of myself as a Melchizedek initiate of light. As this ring is placed on my fourth finger on my right hand, Lord Melchizedek now says, This signet ring of power protects you from the lower astral realms as you journey into the fifth dimension and beyond. It brings power and strength and protection, connecting you to both natural intelligence and the angelic realms. As you receive this signet ring of power, you come into a deeper remembrance of the power you have to create and effect change on the lower worlds and on the sacred earth, surrounded in this beautiful golden blue flame of Christ consciousness and empowerment. 
My golden heart expands through my soul matrix and heart chakra so I may truly know myself as divine love, as a sacred flame of divinity and as a warrior of light. I now clear at a cellular level all issues of abuse and misuse of power as this golden blue flame of cosmic Christ consciousness or crystalline consciousness anchors within every cell of my body and now I find myself traveling the Christed timelines experiencing my highest potential through all golden ages of light and bringing into this now a greater sense of myself and self-mastery as a Melchizedek initiate of light, as a sacred transfiguring flame of divine love, overlighted by the many illumined beings of light from on high and connected to the I Am avatar consciousness of light, the beloved I Am presence of all awakening and awakened souls, I bring my focus to the distortions, myths, and stories disempowering humanity and bringing in the new earth templates. I assist in wrapping Mother Earth in all her life in this beautiful golden blue flame of Christ consciousness and empowerment, clearing abuse and misuse of power and lifting the veils of illusion while anchoring the threefold flame of power, love, and wisdom within the hearts of all humanity. And so it is, and so it shall be, and I now come back into my sacred space, grounding into the crystal heart of Mother Earth and the cosmic heart of Mother Father God. I am a Christ conscious being of light. I am a Melchizedek initiate of light. I am all that I am. From PleiadianLight.net Today from Divine Bro Star of the Light, Ra James, we are shifting into the new earth. We are seeing such a massive influx of energy. A crack has opened up in the Earth's magnetic field. We have a ton of solar wind pouring in. This means we are less protected and feeling more of these energies. This is actually really common around the equinoxes. Of course, things are continuing to intensify as the ascension energies continue to increase. The autumn equinox is less than three weeks away. We have tons of light codes streaming in straight from source. These are highly charged waves of plasma energy that are changing reality as we know it. The entire planet is making an ascension. We are shifting into higher states of consciousness, literally higher dimensions. Many have already become multidimensional and will now help the rest. This energy is causing a shift within your DNA. You are activating. As your DNA is being switched on, your light body is also activating. We were taught that 98% of our DNA was junk DNA. Yeah, they told us our entire blueprint was garbage. They actually show that they understand less than 2% when it comes to DNA. Things couldn't be further from the truth. As we are reactivating our strands and shifting back to our original blueprints, we are reconnecting with Source. We are once again activating our spiritual gifts and abilities. This process of reactivation is the ascension process. Ascension is an ongoing process that we must continue to work at. These energies are here to help us. This crystalline energy, or even the upgrades we are going through, may be making you sleepy at the moment. As we are activating our DNA, sometimes we need more rest and meditation. You may even be feeling DNA activation symptoms. You may be feeling headaches or more aches and pains, mood swings, low in energy, or bursts of ten of energy an increase in psychic, spiritual, or energetic sensitivity, food sensitivities, sleep issues, or even intense dreams. September is going to bring with it a lot of energy as it brings the equinox. It's a good time to really go within for some deep reflection. There are also new codes coming in for the grid. As things are collapsing within the old, new templates are being formed. It's a perfect time to get some work done or bring some new manifestations through. We still have a ton of magic in the air. We can also expect the meteors and fireballs to continue through the weekend. This is a good time to be doing some clearing on your space or just your energy. It's a great time to sage or just to declutter. Ra James, Sparks of DivineLightHealing.com And today from Divine Sister of the Light, Ramona Lappin. Can you feel the huge timeline shift we just completed? We're also removing dark spells, curses, hexes, black magic, and sorcery from the human collective, planetary body, an old grid system along with the frequency net almost dissolved. The new grid system is overriding the old one. 
and there is also a focus on neutralizing and removing psychotronic frequency weapons that have caused a lot of interference on our journeys, which should become a lot easier and lighter now if we've done the inner work and cleared a sufficient amount of distortions from your template. We're collectively returning to our original divine true angelic human blueprint, which is accelerating now. The old is dissolving quickly and clarity is returning to us collectively. Expect huge revelations as the veils are thinning very quickly now. All shall be exposed in divine timing. Finally, people will be able to see through the mind control. There will still be some that experience cognitive dissonance as the old realities is all they've known. Remember to be compassionate, but stand strong in your truth. And the saying, forgive them as they don't know what they're doing, especially the older population that has been highly conditioned for many decades, and that's all they know. Keep seeing everyone in their highest expression and don't lose hope in humanity ever. Remember that most people don't even know who they are, as they've been brainwashed their whole lives to fit into boxes that don't fit. Layers of ancestral, karmic, and collective imprints everybody acquires just through incarnating here. And don't get me started on the levels of negative alien implants, attachments, entities, fallen angelics, parasitic infestation, nanotechnology, etc. Most people suffer from. I could go on, but I will leave it at that for now. Just know that this is a huge shift and the old systems and narratives are collapsing themselves. Remember to keep letting go of the old, keep clearing and upgrading your energy field, template, and DNA and focusing on the new and that which you want to create. Time to celebrate and make the popcorn. Well done, everyone, and thank you for your service. I know this year has been super tough so far. Now we're going super quantum, turning the ship around and upside down, or rather, right side up. And today, from Divine Sister of the Light, Galaxy Girl, the Antarian Collective. Greetings, human beings. We are the Antarian Collective. We are working more and more closely with many of you in your astral travels and it gives us great delight to once again connect in this capacity. When we meet in the physical, in your not so distant future, which we cannot project when this will be, but we will meet, when we are together it will be more of an etheric connection. We are ninth dimensional and we currently embody the higher dimensional aspects of Gaia, which do indeed exist in our hive of activity, of preparation and enjoyment. Gaia is such a beautiful world. So many have enjoyed her loving presence. Her love is seen and felt everywhere in her stunning topography. Many other planets are more basic, more dull. She is a delight, a tropical paradise destination, if you will. And we have been enjoying our interactions with you very much. We are very tall. We do not look like you, and yet we are like you in many ways. Some of us are your higher selves, or aspects of. Some of us are serving as your intergalactic guardian angels, if you will. We are doing our part to protect the lightworkers from the misdeeds of the dark. All is well. We are the Antarian Collective. We are light weavers in our own right. I am seeing light language codes become thin, shiny, gossamer-like fabric of the most vibrant pastels. They are weaving the light language into a fabric-like substance. We wish to imbue you and your homes with this special fabric of peace. We are a peaceful race and nation. Long ago have we left the warring ways and we delight in anchoring peace. These light codes of our language and world are our gift to you today. We offer them freely to you. I see they are now translucent light robes of vibrant pastel colors. Would you like to wear this? Yes, thank you. We offer them freely with love and deep respect to our light workers and family embodied on ground. You have many aspects, you have many forms. Be assured your success is nigh, in fact, you have already succeeded. These robes will enable you to feel more cocooned in light. We see the greatest challenge for our light worker family is not letting the outside world affect their inner world. This oasis of higher dimensional peace we shower upon you today. Oh, we realize that we may not be as exciting as some of our other friends. I am seeing dragons. But we hold steady, we hold strong, as do you, our beloved family, our beloved ones. They are weaving a vortex of rainbow light and colors around me. I see other lightworkers joining in all around the world. We are adding our light. 
We are weaving our own fabric, and we have spanned the world with this light fabric of higher dimensional light language from not only the Antarians, but now more and more of our galactic friends are joining in. It is a fabric of multidimensional light language from many systems. It is singing. There is laughter. There is joy. It is becoming an orb of light language and globing Gaia and all upon her. Yes, we send forgiveness to the Dark Ones. We fill this forgiveness with peace. We send peace to our brothers and sisters who have been so enmeshed in the game. We send healing to all. The light quotient that humanity is able to contain in this moment is expanding further. We see great expansion, great love. We are the Antarian Collective. Know that you have also contributed your own unique energy signature to this intercosmic, interdimensional light language orb robe for Gaia. Thus all shall be blessed. Sources all around you. We see Nova Gaia clearly from our vantage point. That which is low shall last not much longer. It is fading into the interdimensional mist of change. Vibrations must be in alignment to exist. We see the vibrationary codex of the human ones morph into the new for a new and brighter existence. We send our light language of peace and healing to you now. I am seeing golden streams of symbols streaming down all around me in the form of DNA. I feel them standing around me, 9 to 14 feet tall, glimmering pastel praying mantis beings. Their antenna are moving so fast as they also weave the energy with them as well, and they tickle. We are further turning on your crystalline structures. Much has been completed already in this moment of your time. Much has already been done. Accept your ascension, own your light. You are source energy beings, not the sinners of your books. No, you are source energy beings that have been experiencing lack of itself within an unbalanced matrix that was hijacked by those who seek power over others. We send light and healing to this. We send light and healing to you, to Gaia. Gaia is now ablaze with the light language of our love. We are satisfied. We pledge our service to the Ascending Ones upon her form. We are the Antarian Collective. You too may ask for a healing from us. We heal in colors and light language of peace, always in service to the All. We are the Antarian Collective. We love you and are so pleased and proud with your progress. Galaxy Girl Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Maureen Moss Building a Bridge of Light The next four months are crucial. As mentioned earlier, at the time we walked through the most potent Lion's Gate to date, simultaneously we opened a portal of retrieval for our divine selves to come through and at long last have the opportunity to have its being in our God bodies. It is then the level of our commitment to awaken amplified and required us to now focus 100% on building a bridge of light through our hearts and consciousness to the new earth to shut down lesser pathways even if it is a command, and to raise our vibrations higher and higher, became crucial and of the highest service to ourselves, humanity, and Gaia. As each of us knows, between now and December 21st, we are in crucial times. Many are looking at this time as a brace yourself negative, though if our vibrations are high enough, we shall see, feel, and know through our hearts an inherent intelligence that along with what is inevitably will be dismantled and revealed so too shall there be great potential, perhaps the greatest of potential in this lifetime to live without dodging bullets and BS created by ourselves or the world external. There isn't one amongst us that has not had enough of all of that and from endless directions, daily, hourly, minute to minute, enough. We have within us the opportunity to be the hierarchy of divine human kingdom, no less than the hierarchy of the angelic kingdom to whom we are intimately connected and so it is now, we push ourselves, tired as we may be, into a higher octave and a greater momentum to shift whatever frequencies and consciousness is still beneath the divinity of ourselves, to do whatever is necessary to further purify, clarify, realize, to further awaken, to further be a way of being aware and to use then our awakened awareness to establish our sacred heart's consciousness as the preeminent consciousness that ebbs and flows in the present and eternal now, and that knows that we, the divine new human, have been destined to surpass and overlight anything, anything at all that has come before us, 
Still the work is ours to do. Beloveds, our single focus, truest self, with hearts ablaze and vibration high, need to be realized and expressed in the divinely woven fabric of day-to-day -day life as we in full faith and consciousness unfold the future of ourselves beginning now, one love, one heart, in and for the highest good of all involved. Blessings, grace, and love, Maureen, from MaureenMoss.com. And today, from the Zolkin Times, Kin 159, Blue Electric Storm. Electric is the name for the number three, and its keywords are activate, service, and bond. The third day of any wave spell is always a real live wire. The number three is great for activating. It boosts the energy of the day. Today is Blue Storm, which represents cataclysm, self-generation, and energy. When the storm comes along, it can bring changes in a disruptive way. Some people enjoy this energy and the refreshing changes it brings. Others are frightened by the storm and feel compelled to hide under the bed. If you don't like the change, you won't enjoy today. As it is an electric storm, look out for the lightning bolts. A good day to get things done and make sweeping changes. Harness this awesome force or get blown away by it, is today's message. The guide today is the Blue Knight and the Dreamer of the Zolkin. When it is guiding us, the Blue Knight is saying, follow your dreams. With all his electric power giving everything a boost, you can utilize this energy to power your imagination. Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Christina Papa Giorgio. Blue Electric Storm, Kin 159, 4 September 2020. Catalyzing transformation. 4 9 2020 equal 4 9 22 equal 4 9 4 equal 4 13 equal 4 4 4 4 angelic portal 4 form structure foundation earth angelic 9 destiny service compassion endings 22 master builder architect of peace kin 159 equal 15 equal 6 Heaven, Christ Consciousness, Harmony, Love, Romance. Huge energies are available today to catalyze divine miracles and transformation. Day 3 in the Red Earth Wave Spell of Evolution through navigating our way through the signs, synchronicity, and earth magic, flowing and aligning with the rhythms and cycles of Nova Gaia. Today we can access huge catalytic energies to transform our lives as we delve deep into our earth's dreaming and unleash great streams of abundance. Tone of creation, electric is tone number three in the tone of creation. It is the first of the three emotional realm tones. Its focus is on activating and being of service to others through the action of bonding, that is coming together with others to co-create and be of service. Electric energy provides the ignition or spark for your manifestation it is a current that needs to keep moving and flowing, transmitting energy. It also adds power to anything you are creating today. An extra electrical boost to draw upon. The power of three is derived from two units merging and creating the third, more powerful entity. This action duplicates the essence of bonding and service that the electric tone provides. Thus today we may experience close bonding and divine destined relationships with our kin in order to step into our new communities and greater destiny. Note a strong electrical charge exists between monadic souls, so coupled with today's code, this makes for a very electrifying experience. Expect sparks to fly. Do not underestimate the powerful forces available today. Electric people can accumulate great wealth, power, and resources, so use this explosive power today to fuel and accelerate your divine mission through service to others. This brilliant electrical storm has tremendous power and charge behind it, which can be focused on transporting you from one reality to the next, leaving behind the old paradigm and finding yourself in a brilliant, prosperous new location. We ain't in Kansas anymore, Toto. Hold on to your wizard's hats and get ready for miraculous changes. In becoming a conscious dreamer, you can assist in literally creating a new reality for yourself as well as contributing to the larger dream that is emerging. By focusing on this creation, your thoughts and intentions are projected across the crystal grid network that encompasses universes. This energetic field seeds, supports, and empowers the creation of an unfolding reality. At a certain point, when a critical threshold of energy has been focused on a clear intent, such as collective abundance, the underlying constructs of reality shift and a new reality begins filtering into human experience. 
Make no mistake, great change is seeded by conscious dreamers who understand and know that they are co-creating the larger dream. What dreams will you activate and charge today? Hold the presence of the collective dream of our new 5D Ascended Gaia in your manifestations today. So planetary dreamers, trust in your great dreams and utilize these powerful codes today to make your dreams come true. Miracles do happen. Expect great things. Today's question is how can I harness the power of the storm to catalyze great transformation and manifest my dreams? Divine blessings for unleashing a great deluge of joy and prosperity. In La Kek a la Kin, Christina White, Magnetic World Bridger, Kin 66. Kin 159, Blue Electric Storm. The mantra, the code for today is, I activate in order to catalyze bonding energy. I seal the matrix of self-generation with the electric tone of service. I am guided by the power of abundance. So on this powerful day of infinite light and infinite life, let us know in the comments below, beloved beings of light, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're seeing, your visions, your dreams, and synchronicities. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click the subscribe button below and the little bell to get notifications. And as always, we have a link in the description below to the transcriptions of today's transmissions, and we archive these on our website, primedisclosure.com. I'd like to also thank everyone for their support on Patreon. I'd like to welcome and thank Divine Sister of the Light Julie for your pledge. And I'd also like to thank Divine Sister of the Light Linda Marie for your pledge on Patreon. And thank you everyone for your continued support on Patreon and with your donations. I appreciate you all. If you'd like to support my work and mission, which many of you know, my mission is fulfilling the prophecy of divine union, eagle and the condor, and creating a sanctuary and healing retreat center in Washington State. Myself and the condor and our soul star family are seeing potentially by Mount Adams. I'm also seeing a natural spring potentially a hot spring and a river, potentially by Hood River. So once I head out there, I'll look for this land or this property, connect with other light workers. but ultimately it is up to the condor where we make our nest to transmit the highest love codes, the, the Shakti Shiva energies to all of humanity for the coming together of all divine unions to assist in manifesting new earth for all sentient beings. So if you'd like to support my work and mission, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash prime disclosure. I would also like to thank Divine Sister of the Light Barbara for your continued support and donations. Much appreciated. And thank you everyone that has sent me messages and offering me places to stay along my journeys. I'm seeing on my journey to the sacred portal of the gold condor as I travel through five portals that I won't be able to connect with anyone along the journey. But after the reunion, the reuniting, I see many gatherings and connecting with many of you. So thank you for your offers and I'll be in contact with as many of you as I can respond. My main focus right now is our team on Patreon because that's what's supporting me along the journey for the funds that come out of that and donations. So I'm anyone donating and um, supporting on Patreon, that's my main focus right now is connecting with all of you on there. And then we'll see what happens once my journey is completed and I'll be in contact. I'll try to record a little something, either do a live stream at each portal and post it on this channel on Paul Butler and Prime Disclosure. Prime Disclosure is my backup channel, just in case if the nefarious ones take down my main channel. But I'm not worried about it because everything is coming to light. Everything's coming to fruition. So today, on this intense day, as we were speaking earlier, that there was a moment where I was in between worlds and jumping timelines. 
And this was the first time I've experienced where within a half hour, I was dreaming while awake, and then shifting into alternate timelines, then journeying to the void, and then also jumping time. So these are so connected with some of the new energies and codes coming in. Someone had a uh, question on the comments about what are codes. Now you can think of codes as frequency and resonance. Now codes mean many things. You can think of it like codes in our DNA called codons. We have 64 codes, double strand 32 and 32. And you can think of it like binary code. Now binary code for computers, ones and zeros, came from the Yi Ching, which is part of the gene keys, because there's 64 hexagrams and there's 64 codes in every strand of DNA, and it, they're synchronized. And they believe the Yi Ching has been translated as the Book of Change or the Book of Fortune. Fortune, like telling your future. So we see this, these codes, now binary, zero one, that's a switch, zero off, one on. So it's on, off, on, off. It's also a quanta, like in quantum physics. Emptiness in the form, form into emptiness, emptiness back into form. It's a fluctuation, it's a vibration. That's what frequencies are. It's the rise and fall through zero point, through neutral point. That's the trinity, the high, the low, and the middle, like the three Dantians, or like father, son, holy ghost, father, daughter, holy ghost, mother, father. You could say mother, father which is the past, present, the son, daughter, and future, the spirit, the Holy Ghost. Every tradition has a trinity within it, symbolizing basically the same thing. So we see these codes. The sun is transmitting frequency codes. Just like in computers, we say source code. What is that? That's the main foundation of a simulation or a program. Just like Windows, the operating system, only people that know or have worked for Microsoft know the, or have worked with any of the source code. No one knows that it's a big mystery and it's, it's a very strange anomalies within the code. So there's many theories about who Bill Gates got the, the code from originally. So we see when it comes to, and this is some 3D stuff to <laughs> symbolize 5D, I know most of us, most 3D things don't resonate, but the 3D stuff I talk about points to the higher dimensions and the interdimensionality and the quantum, the quantum physics and the quantum leaping, quantum jumping. So when it comes to source code, there's two different kinds, open and closed source. Open means that it's open to the public, open to the world, like Linux operating system, so anyone can enhance, change, manipulate the code. And then there's closed, like... OS X for Apple or or Windows is closed. No one has access to the source code. You can do add-ons and create programs that work with the operating system, but the system itself is closed. So there's a big divide amongst programmers and software engineers. I've known many of them over the years and have worked with several closely. And they like to duke it out, like most separation things and divisions. It's within almost every kind of system on this planet and organizations. So we see these codes as some of the synchronicities. They're numbers, it's mathematics, it's geometry, it's sacred geometry, it's pulsing light, it's waves. You can see it as a wave, but it's actually a sphere that's expanding from zero point, which is everywhere. That's the paradox. And that's how... Like Dr. Walter Russell, when he said, God is the still white magnetic light at the center of all things. And that center is everywhere. People would say, well, how is things moving if everything's still? And that's a mirrored effect and a pulsing. We see reality flashing in and out of existence a thousand times a second. So it appears like it's solid and stable and, and moving when each moment in time is a still picture projected in front of our consciousness to create the simulation of motion. But it's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with that because through this great motion, everything's changing in a state of flux. Consciousness is experiencing everything it can manifest. 
and we reach this omega point in the expansion of consciousness or the experiment of consciousness to where we know the I am presence, we know what it's like to suffer, we know what it's like to be separate, what it's like to be alone, what it's like to be together, and we realize that we have suffered enough. Consciousness itself, individually and collectively, knows that it has suffered enough. So what do we do about it? We raise our frequency, we raise our vibration, we connect with our source power, our source energy, the central sun that is within you as an individual to connect to all the central suns and every living being to affect the collective. And we do this by living from our hurt. We do this by connecting to all things and feeling that connection and raising up in our ascending energies through the love activations, these love codes, which are coming from us, the star blossoms, from the higher dimensionals, from the ascended masters, from the star nations, all together. And this is multidimensional. That's why we say what we're experiencing is a divine plan because it comes from source. And the great mind once said, you can only be one with the universe by having great faith, great faith in it, which you are one with. And it's through this faith that we can move mountains, we can manifest heaven on earth. There is no doubt. And every day we take a leap of faith. This journey I'm going on is one of the greatest leap of faiths I've done in my lifetime. It's taken me 30 years to prepare, but it's my deep connection with the Condor, Divine Feminine, my Venusian Queen, that has encouraged and activated me at my deepest heart level to say no matter what I'm going to do this I'm going to live out this vision this prophecy because part of new earth every day every moment becomes prophecy where we live as time is our time itself is you could think of as like the paint and the paintbrush upon the canvas of space time continuum And we do this with our magic, the magi, the magic, the matrika, divine waters, divine love, divine connection. And that's how we experience the divinity within, by feeling that love, not hiding from it, being fully exposed, being totally vulnerable, and healing from all past suffering and humiliation. Because it's when we lose trust in the Tao, in nature, in the universe, when we lose our faith. And a great psychologist once said, I can't remember if it was Carl Carl Jung or Dr. Phil. (laughs) I'm just playing. A great psychologist once said that all fears, no matter what it is, lead back to the fear, the core fear of losing control. And that's the thing, it's the paradox that it is us wanting to be in control that makes us lose faith. It's not a bad or evil thing, but we see how by our loss in faith and our loss in our connection with divinity, with the divine, that fear manifests, that doubt manifests. And I'm not claiming to be above all these things. I've felt all of them in my lifetime and they still creep up every day. My faith is tested, especially with this great mission. As the doubt starts coming in, as the fear, and it causes an emotional response or a feeling within my vessel that is uncomfortable. And I'm going to be as honest with all of you as I can. I can't say everything, but (laughs) I try to speak from my heart and tell you what I'm experiencing going through. And many of you respond in very positive ways that. It helps you out. Because part of our journey, I've trained over 30 years with many masters, and part of the journey and why we seek out guidance and spiritual practices and systems and go to gurus, sifus, sufis, senseis, all the masters of any spiritual art, is to help resolve suffering, how to free ourselves from the matrix, all these things. That no matter how much you prepare for really anything in the future, That's why we try to live in the presence. Just like a warrior prepares to go to battle. It's one thing, our perception of what that will be like. 
and another of what the experience actually is. And it's usually worse in the mind than the confrontation. But it's through that practice and through our perception and our gnosis, our knowledge, that I am eternal, the I am presence that's here. Because one of our great fears is of death or the end. And that's why Alan Watts would say, do not fear death because you cannot die because you were never born. You just don't remember who you are. And that's the eternal self. The human mind, for most people, only know the timeline from when this body was born. And that's what they go off of. And it's through our spiritual practice of going within, seeking the kingdom of heaven within. The kingdom of heaven is that still point. But it is also the love that is eternal, that is within us and all around us. It is everywhere. That is why God is omniscient, omnipresent, everywhere and every when. And it is in that unborn mind of Buddha, the eternal mind, that all things are perfectly resolved. And then in that state, in that awareness, our pure awareness, we activate our higher abilities of living in love, living in our connection, living in our empowerment, our divinity, whatever name you want to give to your highest feelings, your most holiest feeling, your sacred emotion and feeling for our compassion, for humanity, for all life, for all living beings. And that is what we are activating now through this ascension, our love for each other, for the children, for the elders, all living beings, for Gaia herself, for our source creator, which is not separate from us. That was part of the lie of the matrix, which we are all resolving now by realizing our own divinity, that we are all equal. Every living being, you look into the eyes of the soul, you look into the eyes, and you look into the eyes of that pure awareness. No matter how many layers are between, how many filters, it is always the I am presence that's here now in this body where I always am. And as way shores of the light, with our great faith, we take that leap, we take that quantum leap, diving into the abyss. Although we're at the center of the storm, we dive into the storm through and through and through till we totally break through to the other side to merge heaven and earth. And we don't stop. We never give up. Some days are easier than others. Some days we suffer more than others, but we're navigating through these energies and we're all in this together. We're all feeling at the deepest levels. We're all navigating this unknown energy. You might hear a lot, unprecedented times. Yes, that's because in eternity, this, what we're experiencing now, is a culmination point of all timelines, all dimensions, all realities. That's why all the star nations are watching now and all the ancestors of all lineages are with us now, some to be here as witness, some to assist, some to teach, many different things. So whatever rises up in you, just know there are no wrong feelings, just sometimes wrong actions. But whatever you're feeling is part of the releasing, it's part of the letting go, and it's part of the activating and the rising up. So we're anchoring in the highest light, the highest codes into the grid. We're rising up into the heavens above, into the sky beings. We're becoming one with heaven and earth merging the two worlds. That's the world bridger. We are the rainbow bridges of the rainbow nations of Pachamama. All tribes are in my heart now. They're in our hearts now. There's great beauty in every tribe and every culture. There's great art in every culture, great geniuses. Every living being has a genius within, and that is part of the new school we teach the children this from birth, that they are infinite multidimensional beings of life, and within them is a great genius, that creative genius that has infinite potential and infinite creative power, and we activate that in every living soul as they come into this matrix to transform it and lift it up instead of the lies and deceptions of the ignorant and the false ones. You may say fallen ones, fallen from what? 
fallen from truth, fallen from love, fallen from that deep connection into the separation and ignorance and fear-mongering of what we call the nefarious ones or the nefarious ones, you know. You know what I'm talking about. But we give them none of our concern because through this ascension, through this rising up, as we raise our frequency, raise our love, raise our resonance of our sacred vessels, it lifts all consciousness with us. And in those higher vibrations of what people are calling 5D and New Earth, those things can't even exist. Because the Great Awakening, like in the book of Isaiah, I believe, one day the eyes of your spirit shall open and you shall know all things. And the eyes of our spirits are opening and the eyes of our heart are opening and our minds, our pure minds, our true minds that raise beyond judgment and beyond beliefs into the experience and into the knowledge of the I am that is here for one thing and that is to love. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you all for your support and sending me your love and encouragement. It is very heartwarming to know many of you around the world are supporting myself, my family, my soul star family, the condor and this great mission and sending your love and light. We all appreciate it and we love you all. Namaste.